Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Tyler with Up North Aperture, a real estate media company. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about last minute prep you can do to your home before a photographer arrives to photograph your home when listing it on the market. This is the fourth and final step in our series where I go through and break down what it is you can do to best prepare your home for listing photos. Uh, the goal of which is to help you get the most showing, showings and the most offers available to you and make your home look as best as possible when you're getting it photographed. So with that, let's dive right in. So you're about 24 hours out from your photographer showing up to photograph your house to actually get your list get listed on MLS sites. And you might be wondering what it is you're supposed to be doing at this point, making sure that the host looks as good as possible. Don't worry, I got your back. I'm gonna break this video down into three different steps. The first one being what you can do the day before your photo shoot. The second one being what to do the morning of your photo shoot. And then third, what to expect when your photographer's on site. So starting with the day before your photo shoot, we're gonna start outside with the curb appeal. If you need to mow your lawn or rake any leaves, do that the day before your photo shoot so that grass clippings are not located all over the yard or in the driveway or on the sidewalk um, so that the photos look good. With lawn care, uh, if you need to water your lawn or you have a sprinkler system, make sure you water it the day before your photo shoot, not the day of your photo shoot, because puddles get in the driveway and they don't often dry. Next, you're gonna wanna hide any un unsightly items from the front of the property. Specifically, you're gonna wanna hide garbage cans, which don't look good in any first impression photo, and number two, any hoses. Those are the two big ones. If you've got any other unsightly things, make sure you move those but garbage cans specifically and hoses, which are generally bright in color and look very unorganized. So just get both of those out of the shots if possible. If it's winter right now, you want to make sure you shovel your driveway and sidewalk. And if it's icy, make sure you salt the sidewalk to melt any of that ice. You wanna make the home look as easy to access as possible and having snow up to the front door will, will hinder that process. So that's it for the outside. Now let's step inside and we're, we're gonna focus on just last minute decluttering and depersonalizing it. You might still have stuff lying around. If you've been with me for all four videos in the series, you've probably decluttered and depersonalized to the max extent. But at this point, you just wanna go through any clutter on counters, anything that doesn't make a room feel like it's supposed to, um, just get rid of it. It doesn't enhance the photos. Knickknacks and things on countertops, um, little keepsakes and books and envelopes and silverware and any kind of just excess clutter, salt and pepper shakers, clean up spaces to make counters and cabinets look as clean as possible. Less is always more. Next, you're gonna wanna go through your house and you're gonna wanna hide all your cords. Any extra cords coming down from behind TVs, maybe cords from lamps, uh, computers, council, gaming cords, uh, phone charging cords, uh, any cord that you can possibly think of, uh, hide all of those cords if possible. If a good photographer will do their best to maybe unplug something that doesn't need to be plugged in and tuck a cord away, but there's only so much they can do. Now go through and focus on any garbage cans inside, just like garbage cans outside, they're unsightly. And even though everyone's got a garbage can somewhere, if you can get it out of open space, that is gonna be best to do so. Hide it in a closet or in a cabinet somewhere if possible, or just take any large garbage cans, like a kitchen garbage can. If it generally just sits out, put it into the garage for the time being. You can always move it back in after the fact. You're also gonna wanna focus on any garbage cans in bathrooms, offices, laundry rooms, any extra spots, not just the kitchen. Get every garbage can possible out of the photographs. Next, you're gonna go through the house and you're gonna pick up any personal items that you might wear. So I want you to think hats, I want you to think gloves, coats, shoes, clothing, anything you're gonna wear on your body, get that up off of a back of a coat or, or back of a chair or a railing and you're gonna wanna hide it uh, either in a closet, uh, you're gonna wanna put it in a dirty clothes hamper, you're gonna wanna hide shoe racks. Shoe racks are always forgotten for some reason, but take shoe racks out. You wanna give the impression that although everyone knows someone lives in this home, you wanna give the impression that there is no personal items of any sort laying out make the home look like it's more of a staged model home than if you're living in it at all. Speaking of personal items, if you uh, have any toothpaste or toothbrushes or makeup or anything in the bathroom cabinets or counters that is sticking out or showing, hide all of those things. Now you can do that the morning of, but I always find it easier just to take a few extra minutes the day before just to make sure that you've got all that stuff kind of put away. You can always pull it out to brush your teeth and get ready in the morning and then just put it back in a cabinet or drawer. Similarly, if you've got any soaps or shampoos in the shower, make sure you wipe down the shower and move those things into a cabinet or a counter space. You want the shower to be empty. 
as well as other items in bathrooms are plungers and toilet bowl cleaners. Those are both gonna be things you're gonna wanna try and hide as much as possible as well. Now that's it for the day before the photo shoot. Now let's jump to the morning of. You've just gotten out of bed. The first thing you wanna do is any bed that has been slept in or is not currently made, go through and make it and make it that make it look like a army drill sergeant is standing over you as you do it. Take a few extra minutes, tuck all the things in that need to be tucked in. Lumpily made beds don't look great. So making that look as good as possible as a bed is often the main subject in a bedroom. Um, making that bed look as good as possible is gonna stand out immensely. So once you've got the bed made, I want you to go to any nightstands or dressers and I want you to remove basically everything from them. If you've got anything other than a lamp on your nightstand, move it. Hide the cords, hide your charging cords, hide everything. You want it to be clutter free. A lamp is more than enough. Stuff it under the bed if need be, but just get everything else out of the main view. I already spoke about this, but make sure at this point that you've got any extra clothing or anything like that laying around. That could be wet towels from your shower in the morning. That could be a washcloth. Make sure washcloths, washcloths, clothes, anything like that is hidden away the morning of one quick sweep to make sure there's no shoes out um, is always a good plan as well. If you haven't already removed these from uh, the step three, which is staging, uh, go ahead and remove any bath mats or just runner rugs. You wanna showcase as much of the floor as possible and rugs and carpets that are not large area rugs tend to look uh, a little dingy in photos at more than people I think realize when they're actually getting the pictures taken. The one exception to this is an entryway rug. You can absolutely leave an entryway rug down because it kind of gives that like leave your shoes here vibe um, which is totally just fine. We touched on dish rags and things like that, but go through and remove any dish rags, um, soap, sponges, things like that. Hand soap is fine, but dish soap, if you can just put that under the sink or something like that, get it out of the way. In a kitchen, really the only thing that you should have laying out is uh, maybe like a coffee pot or one kind of accent piece, but otherwise hide the toaster, hide the air fryer, hide the, just anything that's on the counter, hide it. If it's a large kitchen, one or two or three items is fine but just hide as much clutter as possible. All right, on to a somewhat undesirable part of the video where I talk about how everyone should kennel and hide their pets. Uh, pets are great. I've got two dogs that shed way more than uh, I ever thought possible, and I love them both to death. However, they do not belong in your photos. Make sure that you hide your dogs either in a locked room, if they're all comfortable with that, put them in a kennel. If that's not possible, you know, a family or friend taking the dogs for dogs or pets for a couple of hours is great. They tend to walk through shots when you're taking them. And because most photographers, when photographing real estate, use a wide angle lens, you're getting a lot more of the room or the house into each shot than some people realize. And a dog or a cat walking through the frame uh, screws up the photos and they have to be retaken. And if they somehow had managed to make it through the editing process without being noticed, um, they're technically not allowed on MLS photos. Now that we've talked about what you're gonna have to do with the animals during the photo shoot, uh, go ahead and hide any dog food, cat food, litter boxes, toys, dog beds, anything like that, go through and hide. Again, everyone loves pets. However, there are a number of people that are not pet lovers and uh, you want to try to accommodate all masses. All right, we're getting to the point where the photo shoot is coming up. You're about an hour out. So kind of what to expect during the photo shoot and last minute, like hour before prep that you can do to accommodate the photographer and make everything go smoothly. For this, you're going to want to first go through and I want you to turn on every single light in the house. And I mean every single light. If you've got any lights in the house, turn them on. You want as much light as possible to showcase the rooms and the living spaces uh, in the best possible light, for lack of a better word. Next, speaking of light, you're gonna go through and you're gonna open every single blind unless it opens out to a brick wall. Uh, make sure that you can see out every window. Once you've got all the blinds open and the lights on, I want you to go through the house and any ceiling fans you have, I want you to make sure they are not on and spinning. Uh, a lot of times in real estate photos, you have to take multiple photos of one shot. That way you can blend certain lights together a little better to make it look as good as possible. A spinning fan blade doesn't photograph well and you either get motion blur or you get the blades in a slightly different spot when you're actually taking the image when you have to blend them. So do your photographer a favor and turn off all ceiling fans. Even if they're on, we can obviously turn them off, but turning them off requires them to stop spinning, which can slow down the process 
as well. If you've got a few extra minutes at this point, you can wipe down any counter spaces or dust again, uh, just to make sure the house looks as good as possible last minute. And if you've been running around like a crazy person, maybe give the house one quick vacuum if uh, you want those nice lines uh, in your carpet. Lastly, if you plan on being there, move any cars that you've got either into the gr garage or down the street. You don't want a car in the driveway or in the front of the house at all. So go down a couple houses down to maybe a neighbor's property um, and park the car there or park your car in the garage if you ha if it is staying at the home during the photo shoot. Great, at this point your home should be ready for photographing and when your photographer gets on site, uh, if you're going to be around at all, plan on not being seen. Ask where you can go for the photo shoot, kind of get the lay of the land for what the process is gonna be if you're gonna be home. A good photographer will walk you through this process when he, they when they arrive, where they'll tell you I'm gonna do the outside or the inside first, depending on maybe light or weather conditions. Like I mentioned, photo shoots tend to take anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes for just a standard photo shoot. However, they might take longer if you're doing floor plans or aerials or 3D tours or anything like that videos. So just make sure you know what to expect. And uh, if you've got any questions, ask your realtor or the photographer when they arrive. All right, guys, so that's it. Everything should be set up for you to succeed and get the most showings possible. Uh, your realtor should be able to communicate with you how long it'll take to get the photos back. I know that some of this can be a commitment to get all the work done required to actually get your home listed and looking as good as possible. However, I strongly recommend you take the time to do that and do it well. It can be the difference between getting one showing and 50 showings, and it can be the difference between zero offers and 10 offers. So take the time. It's probably a great, um, investment in your time to actually make the process go smoothly for everyone involved. So good luck. I'm sure the showings will go great. I'm sure you'll get a ton of offerings if you've walked through all the processes properly and uh, good luck in the future. Thanks for watching these videos.